Well, hello, hello. It has been an interesting day, hasn't it? I've been trying to get uh, Carly, who's in a totally different time zone. She's 10 hours behind me. And we weren't able to do the Facebook Live yesterday uh, to feature her amazing work with Body, Mind and Pause, where she really is um, very aligned with, with my message to, to create a world where all animals are treated with mind for regard. And if you are here, I know that you already love animals. And I love what uh, Thich Nhat Han says, that when you touch one thing with deep awareness, you touch everything. And this is really where I love to live in dealing with puzzling pet behaviors and many of which will very suddenly become understandable to you when you discover the animal side of the issue through learning how to trust your sixth sense and um, speak to your animals, get, get your information straight from the horse's mouth. And in doing so, um, cut out all the guesswork and the invasive treatments and huge escalating vet bills, uh, trying to find out what's going on with your animal. And this is really what I cover in the trust process and also in the Being Human Through Animal Communications program is how do you handle your animal's traumas in a manner that is truly restorative? How, how do you communicate with your pet in a new way um, that's not just fun for you, but has this realization learning? And also how to handle the guilt that associated with your animal, which is a much more common reaction than you might think and what to do you know, if your cat is lost, if your dog is lost, these circumstances call for very different approaches. And I really want to give as much as I can for free um, to you to really start to trust your sixth sense and, and know that you can connect meaningfully with an animal who is ready, that's in that twilight stage and is ready to pass or with a, with a, with a beloved animal companion that maybe has already passed away. I think this is one of the most powerful and deeply healing healing uh, parts of my being human through animal communication classes, um, where you can really recognize that you, you have this incredible innate gift. And so many highly sensitive people that I know are missing this great opportunity to use their gifts in a good way because they don't trust themselves. And I want to just dispel a myth as well um, that, that so many people ask me is, you know, what is the difference between being a psychic or a medium or an intuitive or an animal communicator? And I, I, I'm all of those things, you know, so maybe you can relate to being a psychic, which is somebody that gains information about your life or your career or your relationships or your health by opening up to your energetic field, your aura, or uh, connecting with your spirit guides, the discarnate beings that we have all have around us, or angels, or animal totems, or by other psychic avenues. And a medium is someone who can communicate with spirit energies, such as a human who has passed, or an animal that's passed. And that an animal communicator is someone that can can communicate with spirit energies um, such as animals or trees or plants or even the even the earth herself so just know that for the sake of this this facebook live an animal communicator is someone that can telepathically communicate with animals and i just happen to be all of the above and and you probably are too so um first of all i want to just talk tap into um, this this whole doubt that seems to be coming up, a very common question that I get asked about intuition and sixth sense, those spidey senses where the hair stands up on the back of your neck and how you can start to trust that you are a multi-sensory being and leave the old physical reality um, and this this programming that we, we only have uh, five normal senses where you were born as an intuitive being with a sixth sense. You can see my third eye glows a lot when I'm on point, but um, it really was the thymus. And this is where animals really taught me how to live in this multi-sensory field of the sixth sense, 
without doing any meaning making or trying to figure things out from your head. Uh, animals don't do that. That's why they don't get ulcers. <laughs> and um, I think we so limit our experiences on this earth plane by limiting ourselves to just the normal senses rather than moving into the subtle senses of um, your intuitive capacities and including that sixth sense. So just imagine that what would happen if you started to expand your energy field and your awareness and really access your psychic capacities, your sixth sense, how much easier it would be to maintain a healthy, a fulfilled well-being or really not be reactive but to grow yourself up in secure adulting right the secure attachment because you're trusting that the universe is always doing what it needs to do to keep you safe and keep you in your zone of brilliance by attunement so that you can be seen and known in a good way so give me a hell yes um hi roxanne good to see you here you know, this is really what I've learned uh, from the animals is pretty much any everything I've learned about being human, I've learned from animals, including how to heal my own body from a life threatening tumor in my head through the power of imagination and trusting in the innate intelligence of my body mind wisdom to have this communication with my body and my mind because our cells are communicating with each other all the time to create internal harmony and balance all the time. Um, we've just forgotten that we're part of nature, that we move through nature and it's our birthright to be living from a multi-sensory perspective. And it can take us to the next level. It can help us to heal illnesses because we can heal illnesses from understanding it from this broader perspective. You know, what is it in our energy field? What are we doing that is depleting our energy and causing us to feel dis-ease or um, psychosymptomatic uh, mystery diseases? And a lot of people often say to me, well, you know, what about children that get illnesses? What about pets that get illnesses? And, you know, I think that children haven't lived long enough to, to live in fear or stop loving themselves, same as animals. So if you realize that the reason, you know, the reason why I always say love yourself is because it expands your life force energy. And when you expand into that infinite zone of possibilities, everybody else does. Um, you know, it's the hundred monkey principle. And as a child, you were aware that you were a six sensory being. But as a child, you don't always interpret the energies around you in a way that helps you to move forward. So if there's turbulence going around you, just think back to when you were a child. If you were living in a place where there was strife and turbulence and abuse, you know, maybe your parents were having problems, you'd pick up on that energy as a child and you wouldn't know how to do it because you were in your subtle senses. So the more that you're an empath, the more you pick up on it and the more you start to believe that you have something to do with a negative energy. You might start to believe that as a child, that you're wrong, that you're the, you're the, the problem and that you're gonna be abandoned and it's your fault that the things around you are happening is because of you. So when children get sick, it very often is because they're picking up on things around them that are not there. Same with our animal companions that are so connected with us. You know, I did this as an adult. I got um, a brain tumor because I was picking up on stuff that wasn't mine. And this is why I actually share my message. This is why I want you to know that you are a sixth sensory being. And it's important for you to actually acknowledge it and and awaken to that because if you are an empath you do pick up on things that are not yours animals do it children do it so the way to help your animal companions the way to help your children is to help uplift them by uplifting yourself by doing your own inner work by doing your shadow work by healing from unresolved trauma and i think this is very important hi alan nice to see you here so, you know, bring your presence to your child or your animal or, or yourself 
so that you can uplift it just like they say on on the airlines put your oxygen mask on first before you do that for your child because then you can bring your energy to that and in this day and age where we're all so overwhelmed with too much information and not enough training not enough practical application not enough guidance on how to apply this to your life which is what my out of the blues program is all about it's very e very easy to become overwhelmed so it's very important to take what's light and true for you in the moment you don't need to know everything and this is where you can ask your body body what do you need and your body will tell you maybe it's calling a friend maybe it's uh going to see a specialist in nervous system um re resetting whatever it is for you it's just important to remember that it, everything is just information until you choose to take inf take that information do something with it because when you do that then you can tune into who you really are which is your sixth sense it is your intuition it's your gut knowing between who you think you are and the real you which is part of that big um universal morphic collective consciousness and when you can tune into that then you can access information that you've read or learned um you can access your library including your akashic record of what applies right now this is what i need to do right now for the condition that i'm feeling right now you you know if you're getting told that you need to up your protein or you need to go vegetarian or you need to add more bifida or healthy gut microbiome um, food, your intuition's always telling you that. And I like to think of it as like plugging yourself into co Cosmic Google, um, that this is really where you can read and access your Akashic record. And what a lot of people, including myself, I didn't understand until the animals taught me how to do this, that if the book that is written in Akasha as the authority of your life does, it makes sense that you can edit your Akashic records. You can create your brilliant future. And I, I get really excited when I think about that because it really gives you access to what it is that you're asking for or what you need right now to live a fulfilled, healthy life or to help your animals in a good way. And one of the steps that you can take right away is to just practice expanding your energy field and i'll link below in the comment section my way you know my guided, guided expansion exercise where if you have a collapse zone which happens in in shock and trauma systems and what i teach in my animal communication programs and my trust process is how do you recognize whether an animal or a per person has a collapse zone which happens a lot more often than you think but if you have prolonged chronic unpredictable toxic stress going on in your no nervous system, eventually you get shut down, which is a collapse zone. And that can look like learned helplessness in a lot of animals and children. But just by practicing, just by training yourself to expand your energy field, ground yourself to the earth, that you can, can uh, create more healthy chi uh, or prana in Chinese medicine. This is governed by the gallbladder, which actually uh, creates healthy wei chi which is your body's first experience with the environment and how you're moving through life and eventually when you have practiced this just like riding a bicycle for a while you won't even need to use it you'll just automatically know how um to tap into your sixth sense and notice is my zone collapsed is my energy being leaking out to too many places and am i feeling overwhelmed by everything and just come back to ground yourself and 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 find your center so that you can then emit as as this beautiful transmitter in the world and i see this a lot with animals and people that have spent extended periods of times being isolated or alone so oftentimes in a codependent and narcissistic dynamic where um your narcissist takes you out isolates you this happened to me with my ex-husband um it's very very quickly that you you collapse but i can get you back very quickly into containing your energy field without this containment on this triangulation and if you don't this is where you can become very susceptible to alone um 
aloneness and also autoimmune disease when your wei qi is very weak or very thin that you become much more susceptible that's my dog trying to open the door hello rover <laughs> what's happening puppies um so yeah so so let me know um if if this relates to you or or if you're not trusting your body's innate intelligence and that you kind of feel like you can't trust your sixth sense because um you know you came in with these gifts to hey daisy um to support you in your own spiritual evolution but also in the collective of all things to be in one mission and co-creation with everything and to remember that your imagination is the key to your higher self it's your key to the connection to everybody else and your imagination has probably been stifled since you were a child so if you can tap back into that you're going to start to be able to trust that that you are the creator of your own reality and and you are the one that gets to change your emotions you know think of a, of it like you know, if there was a device or a contraption um, that could measure your energy field at every level of emotion, you're going to be able to see where you're leaking energy out. And you'd be a lot more aware of, of where you're putting your attention or um, where you're, you're making choices and decisions from that are actually out of your power of choice. And your world would look very different. You know, um, imagine if you were blind and everybody that lived with you was blind and you were told you're not allowed to use your normal sense of sight um fully awakened to see things that the way that they are you'd have to trust and lean into imagination into the the subtle sense of vision where you could see your emotions you could see your aura you could see your chakras you could see where your meridian pathways were blocked or shut down i mean imagine if you could see what your emotions could do and if you could just allow yourself um you know the worst case scenario if you were abused for a pr prolonged period of time and you were too afraid to walk away from physical mental emotional abuse imagine if you could see what it was doing to your life force or your chi or your prana and if you could see it from the beginning from the start that you would walk away that your life would be look very different wouldn't it if you could really trust in your life force energy and um it's a beautiful place when you can sort of let go of all the constructs that you have on what your reality really is and also you know what i've made mistakes in the past um with regards to my animals and i know how easy it is to kind of get sort of down that slippery slope of the rabbit hole um where where we see the years slip away and before you know it your beloved animal has moved into their senior years and old age is not a disease there is no cure it's part of the feeding cycle of life we are born of the earth and we return to the earth and then we take another form we incarnate into another form and if we choose we we choose to inhabit a new physical body suit to experience another way of being physically embodied so you know i think that that it's so important to know that um, when the time comes for your senior animal to finish out their final days or months or years, to just keep in mind that don't ever say that you're, you know, you're never going to, I did it myself, that you're never going to get another dog or a cat or a horse or a parrot because it, it hurt too much. I've never had a single animal that has transitioned into another energy field, right? There is no thing such as death, but I've never had an animal tell me that they're jealous of a new addition to the family. Um, you know, they actually are, are happy for us when we choose to take in another animal and give them their forever home uh, because they know that that's part of your spiritual evolution and it's part of your soul contract. Your animals never go away. They just move into a different uh, unified field beyond the body. And as you express love that goes out into the universe and to your, your departed animal friends, you feel so much love. And, and when you find another companion, 
your deposit animals are so happy to see that you've moved through your grief and into healing. So don't get a new pet or, you know, a new animal before they go. Um, with only a few exceptions, older pets don't really like changes to their routine. And that it's important that, that you expand their zone. And there's lots of ways that you can help them to do that. Because we need our essential vital life force, our chi. We need to be connected to our bodies at the time of, of transition. And a lot of time if there is pain, uh, we, we leave our bodies. That's the same for animals. So we need to pull those energy um, fields back into the body so that they can transition gently in their sleep. Same for people that are in their twilight years. Um, and you don't want to be moving or changing their environment if they're in that they're preparing to to leave their physical bodies. And then, and then a lot of times bringing in a new energy field, a new animal into their environment can be a little bit too much for them to handle and most prefer to spend their time their twilight time with you and the twilight time is what i refer to as the time before your pet your animal transitions or the or the person that you love transitions or or leaves this earth and their physical body behind and this is a sacred time and they will cherish as much of your love and attention that you can bestow on them so don't stress over your animal or make their illness or health issues um you know like this big deal in their life animals don't like it when we get get too entwined in those heavy vibrational energies they need you to be light and i know it's difficult because you love and you care for them and you don't want them to suffer but illness and injuries are signs of weakness in the animal kingdom and your animal wants to be perceived as happy and healthy and whole at all times. So if you focus only on their failing health, you can actually make it a lot more difficult for, the, for them to, to feel good about themselves before they, they depart. So don't become overly emotional when that day comes to say goodbye. Uh, too much of any emotion will be hard for your animal to take in their compromised state. And by you being able to ground and, and center and celebrate their life, celebrate the beautiful lessons and the journey that you've shared together, keeps your energy high. It's really bittersweet. So they really appreciate it when you stay calm and peaceful and you can create a very gentle space where they can leave their body the same way that they arrive, which is with excitement and, and dignity. So, you know, I can't stress this enough either that I hear so many people say, you know, when their animal is asking for assisted death um, and in the euthanasia process that they can't bear to be in the same room um, when the life, the, the, the life force energy leaves their animals, please don't leave them alone in the room with the veterinarian that injects that life ending drug. Please just stay with your, your animal, no matter how hard it is because they need you at that, that end of days more than ever in that final moment. And if you leave them, they will stress out and they will be looking for you and they can't focus on, on that sort of integration, that synchronization of that they lived well and they're celebrated and they were loved and that you are giving them permission to, to go, go and find a new body if they want to and and to tell you how that you can recognize them if they're going to come back to you you know these soul contracts run so deep and you are the most important person in the world to them and you need to be there in those final moments with your animal it's the most gut-wrenching but beautiful beautiful process of of connection and I've been through this many, many times in my own life with, with my animals that have come into my world to be my teachers and to share the lessons and to grow me as a good human being. So just remember, above all, talk to your animals out loud before they go and share all your precious memories with them. They really appreciate the ceremony, especially cats. And I find this with horses as well. Um, they really appreciate you reminding them of all the good times and the funny, funny stories that you've shared. So ask your departed loved ones to, to greet them too. 
um, bring in your spirit team. There, there is so much beauty and compassion in ceremony that you celebrate the time that you shared and that you honor the love and the companionship and them as teachers in your life path, path that they've provided. So, so really remind them of that. And, and as hard as it may be, just keep telling yourself that this is the most beautiful parting gift that you can give to them. And, and, and just allow yourself to sit in that. It's just such a beautiful place. And if you're kind of wondering, like so many people do, you know, what happens to our animal companions after they pass out of this physical reality? reality? I never talk about death because to me, animals have taught me that, that there is no death. There is just a transmutation of moving from one physical form into an etheric or cathartic or astral body until they decide to incarnate in a different form or come back to you or to stay in um, the afterlife, to stay in, in that space, to teach you from there. And I really believe that this goes beyond religion as well, is um, regardless of your religion, whether you were you believe that animals incarnate or people incarnate into other life forms i have i have i was really surprised uh, because up until a couple of years ago when when my beautiful husky dog sky uh, left his physical body i never realized that animals didn't cross species um i i always kind of thought that they were far superior and far more evolved than we were um, in our attachment to the physical, that they would never want to come back as, as a person. Um, but they do, you know, they do. And they do cross species. My beautiful sky came back to me in a cat body. And it was just funny because even though I've been doing this work for, for decades, it took me a while to actually realize that this was my, my sky boy, my husky that had come back in a cat body because he'd always wanted to be an inside inside uh, companion. He didn't want to stay outside. Um, and it was a beautiful journey until my blue cat, my, my beautiful animal companion that had come from a shelter, uh, decided that he was done with, with, with us. He was certainly more, he, he'd really come to teach my, my husband a lot of lessons about letting go. And when he finally let go of his, uh, entanglement in a very abusive partnership in his business blue was done and he left and, and it was sad but i could then appreciate that he was ready to move on and help somebody else that really needed him and this has happened to me many many times with my cats my cats more cats than dogs so, you know, what, ha what does happen when our animals leave their physical body is that very much the same as what happens to us. Um, you know, I, I get asked all the time, is there another realm that where they coexist with our departed human loved ones? Um, and I've also recognized that we, in our highest form of spirituality, meet our animals in the afterlife. We're there to greet them home as our the ones that have already left them. You know, it's just like this beautiful team of cheerleaders that meet our animals there. And they 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 never hold any grudges uh, when we when we know it's time and they they need help and assistance in in the dying process, in that transitional process where we need to uh, assist them through euthanasia. And um of course, there's, they, they forgive us because they know that you're doing the best that you can for them. And they, they are happy and they are free from pain when they leave their bodies. So when it's time for them to die, they will tell you. And, and it's oftentimes that, that we need to learn something about uh, impermanence or the infinite possibilities of, of being able to shape shift which really include a lot of actual messages from departed animals that have revealed so many detailed insights about our lives with accuracy that, that have shocked me a lot of the times. So if you are grieving uh, the loss of your beloved animal companion right now, 
uh, just know that you're there's a gift in all of this and when you learn to work through the grieving process and move into healing everything changes the purity of these the messages that i've received from animals and that have come from people in my alumni in my animal communication uh, programs uh, we've we've just been blown away by it, the new perspectives that they give us constantly from this beautiful place of generosity and um, patience and persistence with us about life after uh, you know the what we call death and you are and always have been the most important person in the world to your animals and when you can discover how deeply your animals love you and how the bonds of love never never die as you journey into the amazing afterlife of animals the messages that await you there are just phenomenal so please don't don't let pain or grief shut you down because when you suppress your sixth sense it causes you to forget that you are connected to all of life you are connected to nature in your true nature that you are experiencing life through your experiences that life moves through you and as much as life gives to you you're giving to life as well and when you shut down your intuition you lose your awareness of your connection to all things all things living and all things past right everything that's lived well and died well it's why i always start my sessions with a with great ceremony and honoring and reverence for my soul tribe for the people and the animals that support me in the afterlife that haven't come back again and embodied and when you when you can do that then you can start to see that the difficulties and the challenges including the animosity and the fear and the blame and the shame that we see in the world today you learn to develop a, a new a renewed sense of being intimate with yourself that's what intimacy is it's a being willing to be into yourself intimacy into me see and it's a it's just a beautiful place to be because we travel together with our animals with other people in soul contracts in past lives um through life one lifetime after another and um so often when i've been working with epigenetics with people that have chronic disease or that their animals are, are, are presenting with mystery symptoms, that the mirroring and the lessons that they are so willing, even if it means ending their lives, they're willing to go to the edge of that for us to actually grow and evolve. And it, it can be a beautiful thing. I had a client once that um, adopted a, an, a racehorse that had been injured and could never be ridden again um and um she just knew when she went to that lot to go and see which of these rescued horses was wanting to be her her partner in soul contract lessons she knew instantaneously the first thing that came to her head is she saw herself visually riding on a crusade with this horse where they had both died in this fealty to king and country and they'd come back together again to fit into her current lifestyle. So many people recognize their animals in an animal that they may be looking for in a shelter. In my case, I wasn't looking uh, to bring home another cat. I brought home uh, Blue, who happened to be Sky incarnated, my husky incarnated in a cat's body. And I brought back Winston, um, who had a lot of a lot of connection, like my Toby cat, to the white lines of Timbavati. So, you know, you can ask if your animal is coming back, you can ask them, how will I recognize you if you're coming back to me? You can make that agreement with your animal. And oftentimes, um, you know, you'll see it in a, in a litter that you're looking at or in animals in a shelter where you just recognize similar quirks or, or markings in their coat or the way that they engage with you when you come up to the cage. So you can ask them. Uh, when they agree to come back to give you a sign or ask how am I going to recognize you um, it's a beautiful thing 
and and you can and you can ask them and trust you know how are you going to find them or how are you going to know that it is really them that's come back to you and if you have an inkling 99.9 percent .9 of the time you are correct um so trust that you know this is listen to my dogs they're playing outside sorry about that so just know you know of, often the animal will find you like with sky and winston i never went to the shelters to go and adopt new animals i was there to help an, another of my clients to choose an animal that wanted to come and integrate in her current matrix um, of cats and dogs um, and then you know there it was it was just like it was it was i couldn't ignore it and i was willing to look at the signs of that of of that so you know an animal in your home often also will recognize the spirit visiting in in your home of an animal that's just passed or when you bring a new dog or a cat home they they might recognize their toys or they might have similar mannerisms and the energy just just feels like ah there you are like the one that's the one that's already crossed and they can change sexes and species as i said so uh, you know with with the uh, blue this beautiful um, color point cross that came home with me it took me two or three days uh, in his integration period of, of becoming part of our our pack at that stage we had three dogs and we had already five other cats but he used to sit on the side of the bath and he'd play with the water and a lot of cats don't like water but he would put his nose under the water and blow bubbles, just like my husky used to do in his water bowl. And um, I remember being very high on my own horse, um, blaming the shelters for over vaccination um, of these of these animals before they leave the shelters. They're vaccinated and neutered and whatever. And he was sitting on the side of the bath with my daughter and me and his one ear kind of flopped down like this and we were still asking him at the time what do you want to be called because a lot of animals that have experienced trauma want want their names uh changed they don't want to have the name that associates them with the life that they had where they experienced a lot of trauma and abuse and um i was too you know too i wasn't being aware enough to realize that he was telling me that he was sky come back and we were saying what's your name what's your name and he kept saying blue blue sky blue sky so we we called him blue and it was only after a couple of days after that experience in the bath when i realized oh there you are sky i always knew you wanted to be an inside dog and here you are well done i'm so happy to see you back but this floppy ear of his that i was blaming on over vaccination went right up and once we acknowledged that it was him come back, he didn't have to keep giving us all these sort of physical signs to recognize him. So it's pretty fun. You know, you can't miss a soul that's meant to come to you if you're, you know, really tuned in, um, not just to your own heart's knowing and your sixth sense, but you're also tuned in with the litter or the animals in the shelter. And maybe even the guardian, you know, if it's if if your animal's telling you, oh, you know what, um, I'm going to be coming back. There's a, a litter of Great Danes or Burmese kittens that are going to be born on this exact day. You can tune in to the guardian of that mother mother cat or mother dog, or you can tune into the energy and the and the the souls of those little animals in utero and ask you know, to them to come back. And if you agree as a soul contract, just know uh, in my experience, um, the soul hovers around the babies that are about to be born or the babies that have been born um, to pre prepare to go into that kitten or the puppy. They're not locked into um, that at conception. Sometimes it happens that way. But if there's a change in circumstances to the timing and the litter, um, say for example, that maybe when that cat gives birth to the litter, but the one, the one body that your animal was going to incarnate into decides not to, not to be birthed, they can delay coming back as well. Um, the spirit realm is right with so many possibilities, unlike the physical plane. 
So I think with that, we all reincarnate to experience a new soul interaction and where there's new lessons to learn. And people, as I said, they can come back <laughs> as animals and vice versa if, if um, they choose to. I, I, I don't very often see animals that want to have a human experience because they are a lot more evolved than we are already. But it is possible, and I've often had, I had, the, I had one situation once where I had a lady uh, call me because she was really concerned about her cat's health. And she said, you know, her cat was this beautiful, real hunter type, and he was very active and engaged, and he used to pounce on everything that moved, and he loved climbing the counters and um, the curtains. And all of a sudden, she noticed that he was being really, really clumsy. Um, and and not being able to to climb without falling down and he just looked not very feline in his movements and he he'd also eat his food in a way that was really messy which is not very common in in cats you know they're very very um proud of the way that they conduct themselves with elegance and grace and this cat had started like messing his food all over the place and when he drank water, it was splashing all over the place. And when I connected with him, I'd found that a dog had decided to jump into his body. And this is where what we, we call about um, first in, last out, uh, where a, an animal soul will jump into a body and take over. And what we would see as, as in human uh, Western medicine as a, a psychotic break or... Um, somebody that was in not in their right mind but often this happens you know that an animal coming back they can replace another soul um because they're making an, an agreement that the animal takes over the body so the over soul um becomes the walk-in and this is what had happened with this with this cat that that a walk-in great dane that had left his body had jumped in to this cat body and made him very very ungraceful and very not cat-like um, and it happens by soul agreement that works for both beings but it can also happen instantly in divine order and plan that they could cross today and an animal spirit can come back in the next day in a litter that's born a few days before a litter that's coming in it's not locked in but i had to then go in and speak to the soul of this great dane that had taken over the dog's body the cat's body and say hey you know what go find a litter of great danes that's about to be born if that's what you want to experience life in a big dog body not a little dog body um but but this is not working for you this little body is too small for this energy of this big great dane and he was very compliant and and jumped out of the body that he was occupying and went off and found a great day litter that was being born and the cat returned to being graceful and elegant and, and her own hunter self so i cover this in detail um inside of my entity and spirit program which is such fun to work with entities and spirit helpers and animal totems but just know that you know sometimes that your animal won't choose to come back um, if they want you to 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 spend some time in grief to process all the lessons for your own spiritual growth and evolution. So don't rush that part. Um, really trust your success on that one because their, their lifespan is so much shorter than ours. They're here to teach us about other worlds and letting go and the grieving and, and the transitional or dying process, the death and dying process. And sometimes you may hop in by soul agreement months later or the next day. You, I see this happen often. So all you have is choice, the power of choice to choose, just as they do when and if they want to return, depending on what they come to teach us. And if our soul contracts are, are complete, they'll go off and they'll have another experience. But when, um, you know, when they've shown me myself in that spirit realm, they've shown me how to break away um, of the old body and on the spirit realm, it's so different than it is here. There's no pain, there's no emotional or mental discord. Everything is totally liberated from that physical construct and it's much more peaceful. It's much more um, expansive. It's space rather than um, 
than, than the identity to the self. And your companions just know, you know, your companions never get upset about being euthanized, even in young animals that could heal, that, that, that could choose to, to heal their bodies. Sometimes they do choose to go and, and reincarnate, just like we do. Um, again, going back to the entity uh, program that I work on, it's just like if you, if you decided to hop into a body, um, that, that has been birthed into the world and you go into that family and you suddenly realize that how you didn't want, you didn't sign up for the, the visit, verbal abuse or the physical entanglement and codependent and narcissistic arrangements in that household, you jump out, right? It's like having a too late sign up on, on the physical body suit that says room to let, room to let, and you to choose it, choose it because it feels good. And then when you get there, it doesn't, that you have the power of cho choice to leave that body. So oftentimes, I certainly know that I was a walk-in, um, and I can see that just by looking at, at pictures of me as a child, um, that I'm not, when I look at that, it's just like, who am I? You know, there is no, if there wasn't any reference to the stories and the photographs, um, that my parents sh showed me pre three year old, I don't recognize me in that body, but that's a very intricate and exciting place to go. So if you're interested in that, let me know about my, um, entities and spirit guides and totem program. Um, and just, I know I've jumped around a lot tonight because there's been a lot coming through. But if you do have an animal that's sort of in that twilight zone, I had a dear friend of mine that's Yorkie was ready to pass. Don't be surprised if they suddenly get this. You see this in, in hospice with people that are, are preparing to pass. They almost get this renewed sense of energy and vitality going. And you get all excited because you think, wow, they've turned a corner and they're going to stay. Um, but this is very sacred time before a, a being leaves this earth and transitions to the other side. And it's actually a term that a very wise horse told me about many, many years ago, where she showed me these very ancient images of her, of her ancestor and explained how sacred the time is before they leave. So to the animals, a spiritual passage from the earth realm to the spirit realm, it, they want us to celebrate. They want us to have reverence and honoring in telling the story of of what a beautiful adventure that they've had with us and 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 give them this renewal and reflection as well so that you make their life just like you would anybody that's passing more important than their death we have to be willing to live well and honor life so that we can pass in a good way so it's it it is an honor you know the horse told me this um for animals to share this space with us it's far more common in the animal kingdom to go off alone at, as the, their time approaches, which is often when, you know, family members leave the side of sitting vigil for um, a human being that's ready to pass, that that's often the opportunity that they will take to gather all their energy back into their body and pass because they're ready. And um, it's much more dif a difficult path that we walk uh, when we watch anyone that we love, uh, vital life force energy, their light fade. I know it's hard to say goodbye and to send them on their journey, but when your animal or somebody that you love in a human body reaches that twilight time, just remember, celebrate their life, honor the time that you share, shared with them and fill them, fill them up with loving memories for the journey ahead use that as fuel it can be such a beautiful way of being in ceremony for that so do anybody doesn't do any of you have any questions i see i've been going for almost 50 minutes now so gosh it's really really long um hi alan yeah max your cat is everything to you i cannot imagine yeah, it's a beautiful journey. That soul contract is incredible. Um, I'm glad that you got some 
insight out of it. I, I apologize. I, I kind of always sort of follow the energy. I never script these. I just kind of speak to the energy that's been coming up with my my people and the animals in the last week. So I'm happy to, that you could help me. Um, yeah, these animals have a much wiser. Yes, they do. It's beautiful. Yeah, Andrew, it's an interesting one because, like I said, I've I I, it, I haven't had much experience with animals that have chosen to incarnate in human bodies. In fact, when I have had um, first occupants jump out, I once had a a, a a horse client of mine that that had a really stilted neck and he was all twisted up um, and was lame, but his whole neck looked really really weird. And when I went in and had a communication with him. I realized that some not so bright human had decided that they wanted to incarnate in the horse's body. It's not very comfortable to be to try and fit a human being into a smaller body. And it's not very comfortable for the animal. So, you know, first in a first occupant in is often the last out. Um, and this is something that I really help my clients work work through when we start to work with the with the entities. And also know how to clear demonic energies and um, magnetic imprinting that's left behind from this sort of body snatching. Um, that it's not not the best or kindest thing that you can do to want to come back as the the queen's corgi. Shame I see her last corgi passed, and um, you know I think it comes back to mindful regard. Thank you, Ellen. She reminds me of you. Thank you so much. All right, guys, um, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. As I said, I'm so deeply sorry that I didn't manage to get my um, Feature Friday guest, Charlie, here today. Uh, we have a 10 hour difference. She's 10 hours behind me, but it will be happening. So stay tuned for that. She has an amazing radio show called Mind, Body and Paws. And of course I jumped at the pause because this is, um, been a lot of my work is pause for thought, pause for all, my whole food for happy animals. Um, everything is so important in that power of the pause. And I think that's, again, what, what animals teach us all the time. So thank you for spending some of your Saturday with me. I see it's already quarter to seven here and my daughter's probably wanting some attention and some nourishment from me. So I'm going to leave it at that. But if you're listening to this on the replay or you think, know that somebody that could benefit from today's little conversation and consciousness around all things animal and the lessons um, they have to share with us and how to speak to your animals and really trust your own success. Please like this, share this, comment, leave me your questions. Um, cause, cause you know, this is, this is one of the ways that I get to show up in service and give generously of what, what the animals have, have shared so generously with me. So thank you. Have a beautiful rest of the day wherever you are. And I will speak to you soon. Lots of love. Bye.